survive my hysterectomy. And you can do it too. We're leaving and we don't have to carry Brittany's uterus through the streets of Mendoza, Argentina. Do we even explain that? No, we'll that's a whole thing. We'll, we'll come back to that. If this is your first time here, we're Eric and Brittany Highland, and along with our seven-year-old son, Caspian, we're attempting to drive around the entire world in our home, a 2021 Jeep Gladiator we call Dauntless. Our goal at Hourless Life is to give you a first-person point of view so that you feel like you're actually with us on this incredible journey. So if you haven't yet, hit the subscribe button. We'd love to take you around the world with us. In our last video, we left the United States and flew back to South America to pick up our Jeep. It sounds simple, but really it wasn't. It was an extensive process and we explained all that it took to make that a reality. If you missed that video, we'll link it here. In this video, we've left Mendoza, Argentina to pick up Domus, which we stored in the neighboring city of San Martin. We pick him up, head back to Mendoza to get ready for Brittany's upcoming surgery. It's not the most fun thing to look forward to, but again, this is not a vacation for us. This is life. It's radically different from the way most people live. In this video, we'll show you what it's like to pick up our vehicle, have a surgery in a foreign country, our thankfulness for our overlanding friends, and how we get ready to transition back into the Jeep full time. We have a lot to cover, so let's get started. We've just arrived in San Martin and we're picking up Dauntless. Oh, you missed Dauntless, didn't you, baby? I want to look at my door. Baby, it's the moment of truth. Are you ready? I'm ready. Valentine! Good job, sir. Good job. We got some things to do. We're gonna open the tent, right, babe? And get yeah, it'd be out. interesting to look at the red arc. We'll yeah. see how you do, red arc. Valentine did a good job. Red arc is at 100%. Are you serious? Yeah, that's it. I'll show him. There it is. Come on, red arc. Kick it. I'm so happy because we had battery issues when we came back from the United States last time, and that was a whole thing. So to not have to worry about that this time feels really good. Oh, it's been a minute since this has been opened. Oh my goodness, it is always such a process to get our vehicle stored and to get it out of storage. I am so thankful that we don't have to do this again for a little while. Everything is just where we left it. We're so thankful for Valentin and his family. And just like that, it's closed. We got out everything we needed. We have everything tucked away. Look how dirty our windows are. Wow, we need a wash. Gracias, Eliana. Gracias, Valentin. Reunited with Dauntless, we headed back into the city of Mendoza. Where we were storing him was about 30 minutes out of the city center. He needed to be washed in a serious way. What an operation, huh? And there's like some random pallets, a cement mixer, all kinds of stuff going on. Look at this. We got cars for days over here. They're doing the inside too? No, I said only the outside, but for some reason he had our mats removed, so. Oh, I had a bunch of stuff on the floor, including my important surgery. Oh, that's nice. Gracias, Don Alberto. We had a lovely lunch at one of my favorite restaurants in Mendoza while Dauntless got his bath. Then it was time to go check into our Airbnb, the place that we had reserved so that I could have somewhere to recover after my surgery. It felt so good to be back in Dauntless, but we were basically just driving him from point A to point B. Here comes Dauntless into our Airbnb gate. This is our first time <laughs> trying to get in here have some fabric here then we have another overhang here but we're good there always have to watch the clearance with dauntless and this is our little place we got settled into our airbnb and excitedly set out to explore the neighborhood we'll share a little bit of that with you here so that you can get an idea of how beautiful this city is this is my favorite coffee shop in mendoza and it just so happens that our airbnb is half a block away right down that street and this is parque san martin it's one of the largest urban parks in the americas a day in the life of the Highlands. We are getting ready for my surgery this week, so this morning I had to go get my labs done. After that, we were like, we still don't have vehicle insurance in Argentina. We should probably work on that since we're driving the Jeep right now. Some of our friends gave us a contact back when we were here before. I contacted them and she sent me like this proof of insurance, but I didn't realize until after that I had never paid. And so I'm sure 
sure it wasn't a real insurance policy. And I reached out to her again and then she ghosted me. She just stopped responding. So I have no idea what was going on with that. Suffice it to say, we still need insurance. We went to an alliance and they said, we only sell policies through agencies. So then we went to an agency and they couldn't do it but they called a place that they said could. So we are on the way there right now. I don't know why it's so hard to buy vehicle insurance in Argentina, but um, then a lot of things are more difficult. Like this morning when I went to give my urine sample, I had to pay for my pee cup. There really is no telling ever what's going to happen. It probably will just not go the way that you think that it's going to go. This is the building here. We think that we have to get back to this door to go in and get our insurance, but first we have to find a place to park. These parking attendants are essential to making the city run because as people are coming to find parking, the attendants flag them down, they help them park, and they help them get out. Okay, it's possible we can get insurance. She said we have to send her all our documents by email because she has to be able to send them to Buenos Aires because they're the ones that have to uh, confirm that they can actually give us a policy. So after all that, we still don't have insurance. So we are going to take pictures and put them in an email and send them to her email address. Oh, there's so much I could say about this. It's fine though. In the end, we did get vehicle insurance. While we were juggling all that, I was also going to my pre-surgery appointments and tests. Our friends at Meet Around the World kindly offered to let Caspian spend the night at their place so that Eric is available to take me to the hospital tomorrow and he'll be there when I go into surgery and when I come out of surgery. What's up, Richie? You ready to wrangle my boy? I, I, yeah, I am. Hi. <laughs> you can see all of the places they've been there with the flags and they are called the Meet Around the World Show. So the reason Richie, Abigail, and Zoe are known as Meet Around the World is they love meeting people and they love meat. <laughs> what do we got on the grill today? Entraña, and this is chinchuline. And over here I got some more asado carnicero, they call it here. Wow. And tapo de paleta, beautiful. Beautiful. Richie's got the entraña. He's got a little medium well cuts for me because that's how I like it. Richie, thank you very much. I'm excited. Looking forward to it, brother. <laughs> On this global overland journey, it is very rare for Eric and I to get a night to ourselves. So we took full advantage of the opportunity. After dropping Caspian off, we went straight out for date night. It is the night before Brittany's surgery, and I told her we could go anywhere she wanted for dinner. She wanted to come to this Italian place that she's been eyeing since we've heard about it. Well, and here's the thing. It opens late. So it just opened at 7.30, and normally we aren't out this late, especially with Caspian. So since he's with Zoe, we were like, oh, well, let's go out late and go eat late. But I want to show you something. It is completely empty. And this is one of the most popular restaurants in Mendoza. And I just asked the guy, I was like, so when does it get busy here? He said, oh, around nine o'clock, it's packed. And I'm like, for dinner? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> Notice that they're playing Cindy Lauper at the romantic Italian restaurant. It was not exactly the most romantic dinner as music that I normally associate with karaoke dive bars was playing over the loudspeakers. But we laughed it off and ended up going back to the Airbnb to calm our nerves and try and get some rest. And then it was the next morning. I'm getting a hysterectomy today in Mendoza, Argentina. Not exactly what I'd like to be doing today, but this has been a long journey since 2021, like two months after we crossed the border into Mexico. And I hoped that my surgery last January would solve the problem, but it didn't fully. While I have some concerns, I am looking forward to health. Here we go. We've made it to the hospital. We just had a really cool Uber driver who actually prayed for Brittany. Which is kind of nice. They took Brittany back at 1046 local time. Surgery supposed to start at 11, be done by one o'clock. If all goes well, Brittany will be back here in the room. I'm guessing sometime between one and 1.30. I'm by myself, just working on our next YouTube video, trying to keep my mind off things. Thinking about my bride, praying for her, and uh, hopefully all goes well.
My surgical team was completely capable and professional. The nurses were so kind. Everyone was trying to speak English to me as I was going into surgery. It was pretty funny and we were all laughing. The situation after my surgery, after I was in my room, was not quite as professional, not quite as great. The equipment isn't what we might expect. I didn't have any nurse call button. There were no monitors to notify the nurses when my sailing bags with my pain medication were empty. We found out after the fact that it was expected that I would have someone spend the night with me, but nobody ever told us. And so I was planning to spend the night by myself and Eric was gonna go back to the Airbnb to have Caspian overnight. And then at the last minute, there was this big scramble as we got the news that Eric was expected to stay there. Thankfully, Caspian was able to have a second sleepover night with our friends, so we were so grateful for that. All in all, it was a little bit of a stressful situation overnight at the hospital, but you know what? We're guests in Argentina. We need to do our best to understand and accept the way that things are done here. And it was nothing else if not a learning experience. I survived. <laughs> I survived my hysterectomy, and you can do it too. <laughs> We're leaving, and we don't have to carry Brittany's uterus through the streets of Mendoza, Argentina. Did we even explain that? No. I am so sorry if this is TMI, and you may not want to hear this if you're squeamish, but right after I got wheeled back to the room to recover, I was like barely conscious, they called Eric to the operating room and handed him a jar in a bag. And he said, what is this? And they said, it's your wife's uterus. And then they proceeded to tell him that it was required that we take it somewhere to have it analyzed. Here we have like a jar in my hospital room and it's my removed organ. And it was a huge debacle. In the end, we basically refused to take it. We were like, this is really inappropriate and not okay at all. Feel free to like donate this to science and do whatever you want to do with it, but we are not taking it with us. So we had to meet the director of the hospital and talk to all these people and sign all these forms. Eric tore up a form at one point and there was a little bit of drama but we left without my uterus. All in, we paid the equivalent of about $2,000 USD for everything, for the pre-appointments, the pre-tests, the surgery itself, the anesthesiologist, the hospital stay, everything. However, we were originally told that we were gonna be able to pay with credit card, and that was our plan. Come to find out that they only take cash or transferencia, which you have to have an Argentina bank account, so we couldn't do that. And so we were scrambling to get the equivalent of $2,000 in cash in about four days. So that was really nuts, but we pulled it off. The day after my surgery, about 24 hours later, we took an Uber back to the Airbnb. Eric got me settled and then he went to reclaim Caspian. We could not be more grateful to our friends for taking care of him and hanging out with him and just knowing that he was in a safe place while we were at the hospital. Hi Zoe. Hi sweetie. Oh my goodness. Did you miss mommy, Caspian? I wasn't sure about it at first. About whether you missed me? No, about how I felt about the whole arrangement. Oh, yeah. You're not used to spending the night away from us. It was sweet to be reunited, but the painkillers hadn't worn off yet and my month long recovery was just beginning. I spent a lot of time in bed there at the beginning, really trying to take it easy to learn from my past surgeries and not push myself. We kind of got into a rhythm. Often Caspian and Eric would go out to Ascenza, our favorite coffee shop on the corner every morning for breakfast and then they would bring me back something for me to eat. Caspian, you always get your normal here, which is what? Two eggs. Two pieces is a bread and a tea. They would hang out at a local playground, spend hours in Parque San Martin, explore the local market, and Eric even took Caspian out to some local entertainment for kids, like a Pirates Theater musical. <laughs> Caspian had the best time there. They also went to a local film museum, which was really entertaining and educational. Whoa, look at Whoa. that. Wow. 
19th century filmmaking. We're learning how movies were made way back in the day, taking us through century by century. This is a very rare projector, 35 millimeter from 1920, and it is being operated off of an electrical spark from two carbon things. Pretty crazy. How cool is that? I could actually see the bright spinning light that was shooting out. All right, I'm gonna show you something here in a minute. That is so cool, Caspian. It's called the Super 8. They even took time to get rid of the broken mattress pad that we had been carrying around in Dauntless since the beginning of the year and had thankfully replaced with a new mattress pad that we had brought back from the United States. Unfortunately, because of economy, we see a lot of homeless folks digging through this trash. So we're hopeful that somebody will come and grab this because it still has some padding to it, but it has a giant air bubble on one side. I think somebody's still gonna take it. Yeah? Not every day they find junk that good in there. That's true. We estimated it would take me about 30 days to fully recover, but a week and a half later, I was getting a little bit stir crazy and ready to start going out. It just so happened that there was a really good reason for it. All right, I'm 11 days post-surgery. Today I'm feeling like I can probably do this, and the reason I'm doing it is because... It's our anniversary! Yay! 13 years we've been married and uh, going and strong, I think. Going. <laughs> We're definitely going. <laughs> I'm happy that it's your anniversary. Are you glad that mommy and daddy are married? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. I don't think I've ever been here and not gotten this dish. It's a moussaka. And so it's eggplant and hamburger, and it's so delicious. I did it. I did my outing. We had a beautiful lunch. It was so perfect. And then we walked a couple doors down to a French bakery. We got a bunch of stuff in the bakery. So looking forward to trying that. And now I'm going to rest. I did rest back at the Airbnb for a few more days before I was ready for another outing. But Caspian could not stop thinking about his sleepover with Zoe and he really wanted to have another one. So I made the arrangement and then we drove back out so that Caspian could spend time with his friends. But wait for it. The weather was pretty crazy. Look at these winds. I learned that this is a local phenomenon. It's called Zonda. And they are these really, really strong winds. You can see the dust in the air and the trees moving. School was canceled for Zoe today. And then the winds also woke me up at 4 a.m. this morning and I couldn't get back to sleep. All right, we're here. It's pretty windy. We're gonna run right inside. Zonda is no joke. We have dropped off Caspian and now it's just the two of us. And we're thinking about going out to dinner just because it's just the two of us. We found an amazing place. It's a food court and it's called what? Planta Baja? Planta Baja. Planta Uno. <laughs> All right. It's Planta Uno. Planta Uno. And we are picked a pizza place because look at this pizza. It looks so delicious and hopefully it tastes delicious too. We're about to dig in. And you guys might say it just looks like a normal pizza. The thing is, we're in Argentina and what do we know about Argentinian pizza? Look, I don't want to diss on Argentinian pizza, but it always looks really gross to me. Uh, they just like, it usually has a bunch of ham on it and like green olives and it just looks really unappetizing to my American sensibilities. For them, it's normal. To me, this looks like pizza that I want to eat. So my mouth is watering and I'm looking forward to it. Our time in Mendoza was rapidly coming to a close and we were dreading parting from our good friends. We knew we were going to miss them so much. As soon as I felt well enough, we invited them over so that we could share a meal together. Secretly, Eric was really hoping that Richie would teach him how to do a proper Argentinian asado. All right, well, first off, we're gonna make a beautiful fire and um, yeah, have a drink. This sign above our grill says, here gather hunters, fishermen, politicians, and other liars. <laughs> <laughs> the next step, Richie put down the grill over here, and now he's got this little shovel looking thing. What are you doing with that? The coals, yeah, the hot coals. And we'll get a few over there, we'll heat up the grill, and once the temperature is right, we start grilling. <laughs> always maintain a fire on one side so we can always get more coals as we need. And I crack open another beer. All right, what do we got today, Richie? Ribs, right? Costillas, 
Beautiful, beautiful cut. I love it. Sausages, aranitas, the butcher's cut. My favorite. Beautiful, beautiful meat. Tapa de paleta. Here we go. Try tip. Si hay algo que sobre el otro día, eso hace mejor roast beef. That's a Swiss German speaking Spanish in Argentina. You guys got to be impressed with that. <laughs> now, what I want you to notice is that he only brought one seasoning. Pure salt, sea salt. That's all it takes. A good cut of meat doesn't need anything else. And that's the Argentinian way anyway, but if the meat is good, what else would you want on your meat? You want to taste the meat. And don't be shy. There you go. We like it colorful. Nothing like grilled onions, and I like them dark and black. It is on the charcoal. What the heck is going on, Richie? Well, we're going to give it some extra flavor and sear. Just have a little appetizer. Let's here. do it. All right, here we go. Okay, this video is going off because I'm about to eat. Caspian, what the heck is going on here? I gave my face paint in. I only have ribs or a, a red cat. What are you going to do, Zoe? I'm having that one. Caspian is having that one. I was just thinking about you. I'm out there getting taken to school, Brittany. I know. I'm sorry the washing machine is so loud in here, but I invited Abigail to bring some laundry over and put it in because Overlander life. I was just thinking that today is like coming back to life after being down and out for so long. Well, we are coming up on almost dinner time. You can see how beautiful this looks. I can't wait. <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> Look at you, kitty cat. Meow. <laughs> Look at that. Holy smokes, you guys. <laughs> Holy smokes. <laughs> we are eating like kings. Woo! All righty, oh here we go. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this is amazing. And there's more. Just a few days before we left Mendoza, I started to normalize and go out like normal. First with Eric, all three of us, but then just Caspian and I would go out and have a great time. We are at the northeast corner of Parque San Martin, and we've been learning about these incredible gates. They were ordered by a sultan and made in a Scottish foundry, but the sultan never took possession of them. And so they were sitting in Paris until Emilio Civit took possession of them and bought them for the city of Mendoza. What are your thoughts? I think that it must have been hard to make those. They're huge, aren't they? Yeah. What about transporting them? Mm. And just like that, our time in Mendoza was done. My surgery was a success. I was completely recovered, actually better than I've been in years. And it was time to get Dauntless live in ready, ready for the road. It is Monday, August 19th. My hello. What's going on, Brittany? Today is the day. We're packing up the Jeep. It is time to get on the road. It's cold outside though. Yeah, I think it's like 42 degrees, but I've been moving so much that I'm not really feeling it. Okay, it's exactly four hours later and it has been extremely slow going. The thing about our, our build and the way that we have our Jeep set up is that every little thing has a very specific place and we don't want to just put things in bags and throw it in the back. We're trying to do this right and do it well. And Eric has been caught up doing a lot of device management and just all those little tech things that we have going on for our travels. I have no idea what you're doing. I just know that you've been working on it for a really long time. We have a lot of footage. <laughs> Well, it's the end of the day and I'm not really sure how I feel. Eric did an amazing job with all of our updates to the Jeep. He replaced the engine filter, he replaced the windshield wipers, did a whole check of the Jeep to make sure it's ready to go on the road. I put away a lot of stuff and yet looking around me, there's still a lot of stuff here. So I think in the end, I am gonna end up just shoving things in at the last minute. I am just so ready to get on the road. In our next video, we invite you to hop into Dauntless with us and head across the continent of South America from Mendoza to Buenos Aires, the capital of Argentina. If you enjoyed this video, please take a moment to give it a like right now, subscribe to our channel, and if you haven't already hit the bell icon, go ahead and do that. It'll give 
give you notifications whenever we have a new video go up. And if you really want to get to know us with an uncensored, transparent view into what this journey around the world is like, then please join us on our Patreon. If you enjoy what we share here on YouTube, then I think you'll really like what you see over there. We have a lot of fun with our patrons who have really become our close community. We give early access to our YouTube videos, share exclusive live video from where we are, and answer every behind the scenes questions that our patrons have. So head to the Patreon link in the description of this video. It costs you nothing to take a look and we'd really appreciate it. We hope you enjoyed this section of our journey around the world and we appreciate you for being part of it. Until next time, we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.